what's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. This time we're going to be doing the preview for the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg match against Burton Albion at home at the Etihad Stadium. So we're going to crack on with this preview and we're going to be starting by looking at our opponents first, Burton Albion. Some of you who aren't all familiar with the lower leagues of uh, English football might be wondering who Burton Albion are. Burton Albion, a for Burton Albion, sorry, former championship side last season. They were relegated on the last day, now in League One, sitting in ninth place. In current form, unbeaten in their last four games. In their last game, they came to Greater Manchester and had a big away win, 4-0 away at Spotland at Rochdale. So that was their statement sent out to us. Uh, they're no mugs, sitting, like I said, ninth in League One. They can cause a lot problems that can go long with the long ball that can hold up play overlaps clearing the ball into space um, set pieces their overall directness of football can cause us problems we know how Manchester City are when teams want to be able to have a go and uh, try and go forward and try and create a chance we have a habit of being able to concede with them only creating one good chance because our high line defense is so damn high and it can cause problems, particularly with balls over the top. There's various ways of them buying free kicks and things like that and winning corners and throw-ins and putting balls into the box. So that's what I imagine Burton Albion will be trying to do, as well as trying to sit deep. The manager, Nigel Clough, son of Brian Clough, the legendary manager. Um, but yeah, um, a decent manager. He's done a good job at Burton Albion. And, and uh, I imagine Burton, um, there's quite a bridged gap between ninth and the playoffs in League One at the moment. They'll want to try and reduce that deficit. So for them... Um, this is like a no pressure game really, it's just a semi-final, they're coming to the Etihad Stadium, great opportunity for all of their players to be able to play the current champions and the Centurions on their own patch and they can show what they can do and all players will be absolutely buzzing looking to try and score a goal or make something happen and have that memorable cup moment, so yeah very dangerous banana skin really uh, they've got Lucas Aikens up front, I've seen him in person a couple of times as well whilst watching Burton Albion last season um, but he can cause some problems, they've also got other players, they've got big Ben Turner at the back, I think he's a uh, he played, who did he play for Ben Turner? I think he's one of the former uh, Premier League youngsters I think, uh, but he's a decent centre back uh, and Harness scored a hat trick for uh, for Burton at the weekend against Rochdale too. Uh, I think he's a winger. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not an expert on Burton Albion at all, but just correct me in the comments any Burton Albion fans watching this and let me know um, of uh, your best players and what you think is the way to try and go about this game. Do you think sitting deeper? Do you think just trying to be more expressive or do you think just uh, going for it? Like I said, I'm expecting them to be very direct in this game. They're going to try and cause some physical problems for us up front. But they've also got uh, some pace up front too to be able to cause us problems. Uh, looking elsewhere at the squad, they've got Bywater, the goalkeeper. He was their number one last season. However, in the last game he was on the bench. So I don't know whether he's uh, down the pecking order or whether he's had an injury or whatever. But like I said, he was their number one last season. I've seen him a couple of times. He was their number one. Uh, but yeah... Like I said, I'm not taking them uh, for granted. I'm not taking them lightly. I think that one of the most important things in this cup tie is how serious Manchester City decided to take it. Well, Pep learned his lessons last um, last season when we lost to Wigan in the FA Cup through taking them lightly. I can accuse the team of that, I'm fairly sure. But um, he took Rotherham very seriously. He said he wanted to pull out a strong team to be able... He remembers the Wigan game, wanted to rectify it and show that he is taking the competition seriously and that the message has been spread to the players and the players are taking it very seriously. Well, exact same situation here again and in Manchester City in the mood. If we can get a, the first goal, we can make things happen. And from there, if we can get the second, then gaps start opening up and then it becomes a very long tiring game and a very big pitch uh, they've also got Diavante Cole former Manchester City youngster too amongst their ranks he was on the bench against Rochdale so we might see him come in at some point in this game too the former Manchester City lad now uh, for Manchester City, I'm not expecting us to make too many changes from that game against Rotherham. We scored seven goals, we played very impressive, so it would be very harsh for anyone to lose their place. I suspect that we might make two or three changes. We already know one of them is going to be Murich in for Edison. He wanted to go with Edison. I presume it's, he wanted him to get a clean sheet to get him a bit of confidence going into the upcoming Premier League games. I presume that's why it's been done and it's happened. So I see no reason why Murich he started in goal for all of our Carabao Cup games for him to go back in goal for this game too. Like I said, the statement's been sent out. 
Uh, Burton's 4-0 away win against Rochdale, very impressive, decent win for Burton. We've had a very decent 7-0 win against Rotherham, so it gives Rotherham something to think about. They know that if uh, they're going to be more expressive or come out to play or they start making mistakes, Manchester City's got more than enough quality to be able to punish them. Uh, elsewhere in the team, you're thinking about changes. I'm just wondering if De Bruyne, um, obviously, apparently is still three, four weeks away from full fitness. Uh, I don't think he's fit enough to be starting two games in, uh, f uh, in four days. So I probably wouldn't start him in this game. I'd probably go with one of the Silvers instead, uh, in my opinion, and then go with the same midfield that we went with. I'd uh, possibly be tempted to go with uh, near enough the same centre-backs too. Like I said, we probably might rest Stones, because Stones played in the match against Liverpool too. So imagine we might get a rest here, so we might see someone else come in. We might see Laporte come back in. We might even see Vincent Company if uh, he's uh, fit to go. You never know these days with Vincent Company. But, uh, yeah, an interesting one. Uh, we've had a tricky festive period. Uh, couple of bad results, Crystal Palace one standing out in mind, the home loss and then the away loss followed that on Boxing Day against Leicester, but since then we've recovered really well, away wins against Southampton and a couple of home wins against Liverpool, that huge result, and then a massive win against Rotherham, with uh, us uh, setting the precedent here, now we've got another cup game to be able to take our focus away from the Premier League and just go about doing what we do, which is the high press, the high intensity press, we do a lot of running, we do a lot of passing and try and make things happen, like I said, the pitch is big, it's very tiring, particularly if we can get things going the right way, if we can get a couple of goals uh, in the first half, like it becomes very difficult, uh, Burton are under pressure then, at the can't afford to concede any more goals and need to uh, maybe even score a goal uh, and things start to happen so I have a feeling that uh, Burton might just sit uh, deep and sit very tight in this game and uh, just try and keep the score down they know they're out of the game at 7-0 <laughs> So they don't want to do what Rotherham did. They know that if they can keep it to one or two goals that they can go and have a proper go at Burton. But I am very thankful, if I'm honest, that this is at the Etihad Stadium first and not uh, at the Pirelli Stadium because that's a right banana skin. That'd be a very difficult game. Home crowd uh, on our back uh, being able to get on top of us uh, and if they could get the first goal uh, makes it very uh, hostile and very difficult. And so it gives you something else to think about. Now for Team News for City, no Bravo. No Mendy. I'm not too sure if we're going to see Vincent Company or not. We should see Murich. I'm doubting we're going to be seeing Kevin De Bruyne. And that's my team news at the moment. Things change in a couple of days. You never know. I've done this well before uh, the actual uh, press conference for Pep. So I don't actually know the proper team news. But just going off what the last game was. That's what we're expecting and what Pep said in the post-match against Rotherham. It's given us a little indication of what to expect from the team. But we've got VAR in this game. Just like we did in the FA Cup um, uh, against Rotherham. So uh, for me... Uh, I'm not too sure if I'm keen on VAR, the way the Premier League do it. If you remember how the World Cup did VAR, I thought that was spot on. Uh, it goes up to the officials uh, watching on the screen. They then think, OK, the referee's got something to think about. And it seems that them officials up there make the decision for the referee um, for the Premier League clubs in the FA Cup at the weekend. It'd be nice for them to say, actually, we don't think this is right, referee. Go and have a look at it on the screen. And then the referee makes the decision, not the VAR officials. That's what it should be. Um, and to be honest, uh, I think things could be done a little bit quicker. Maybe stopping the clock when uh, things have gone to VAR. Just say things have gone to VAR and the clock stops. Then resume it again, you know, like they're doing rugby union, like that, you know, rather than having an abundance of time added on. So, uh, yeah, it's still in a trial period. Anyway, for this game, score prediction, difficult. Uh, I'm confident we can get a clean sheet in this game. Like I said, I'm not too sure that they've got enough of a threat to be able to deal with our defence. Um, I don't think their attack's got enough of a threat to deal with our defence and be able to score gold. It doesn't mean I'm taking them lightly. I think we'll be able to nil them. It's about uh, how many Manchester City can get. Like I said, Burton will fancy if they can get in at half-time at 0-0, that maybe they could even sneak one and win this game. Uh, so I've got the 3-0 Manchester City. I think that'll kill the game. I'm looking for us to try and kill this game in this uh, first leg. Um, anything free goal win or above, I'd say the tie's dead at 2 Mm, it's tight. If it's just a one-goal game, then we've got plenty to think about and still a lot of hard work to do going into the match. Uh, I think it's three weeks later at the Pirelli Stadium. So, yeah, this game can't afford to be taken lightly. Like I said, if we're in the mood, we can kill this tie-off in this first leg. It allows us to have a full rest and we can have a, quite a relaxing January, particularly if the fourth-round draw is nice to us um, in the FA Cup. Anyway, we're going to move on to my team prediction now. I'm going to pop that up for you. Uh, I've gone for Murich in goal. 
Pep's already confirmed that Murich is going to be in goal for this game, so Edison will probably be on the bench. I've gone for Walker on the right, Zinchenko on the left. I've gone for Company if he's fit. If he's not fit, uh, I think it'll probably be Laporte and uh, Otamendi in the centre. Otamendi looks like he's going to get back-to-back -back games. Like I said, the team's got a familiar feel to it of what we had against Rotherham. Gundogan sitting in a deeper role. I've gone for Foden to go into the Kevin De Bruyne role. He kept trying to pick passes against Rotherham like De Bruyne does, uh, but I'd have De Bruyne resting. I see no reason for him to start. Then take your pick between David and Bernardo Silva. I've gone for David Silva because Bernardo Silva did a lot of running against Liverpool and I feel like uh, he should have a full rest. He seems to play loads and loads of games like Laporte. Plays lots and lots of games. I'd probably give him a rest, give David Silva a go for 60-65 minutes like De Bruyne did and then bring De Bruyne on and let him have another 25 minutes or so. It gets no easier, trust me, for Burton fans. Anyway, I've gone for Mares, Sane and Jesus, Sane on the left because Sterling played in the last game so I go with Sane and like I said Mahrez needs more game time I see no reason for Aguero to start in this game, like I said I'd go with Jesus he's got his goal against Rotherham, I'd go with him again uh, with the bench it might be interesting I'm expecting to see Sandler again keep one thing in mind though, will we see Mangala? That would be quite interesting too. Um, still waiting for any developments on him in the transfer market. Anyway, there we go. That's been the preview for this first leg match at the Etihad Stadium for the Carabao Cup semi-final. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, your team prediction and score prediction for this game. Don't forget, if you haven't already, make sure you press the red button, subscribe and put your push notifications on. I've been seeing a few comments uh, saying that I've not been seeing my videos and things like that. Uh, so make sure that, uh, if you aren't already, that you are subscribed. It will be in the sub box. If it's not in the sub box... Uh, like a pop-up at the beginning animation uh, at the beginning of my video then if you just press the subscribe button there's a little bell if you press that that will put your notifications on so when I've uploaded immediately uh, you'll see the bell just above uh, YouTube in your uh, next to your picture you'll see a bell uh, there and that's where your notification will be you'll see it go into red and it'll go one and you'll see my video when I've uploaded there so uh, yeah if you're not seeing my videos or anything then make sure you just do that and you will see my videos mark my words uh, but yeah don't forget subscribe notifications on leave a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video your thoughts in the comments below team and score prediction so social media links in the description below and I'll see you all again for the analysis up uh, after the game, which will be probably Thursday morning. And we've got some interesting videos coming up over the next couple of days, including the transfer update. So stay tuned for that. So it's been JSGC. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy the game to anyone that's going to the game. And enjoy the big day, Burton, by the way. I uh, hope you have a good trip. Hopefully we'll get the right result, but you'll be able to enjoy the day like the Rotherham fans did. So I'll see you then. So it's been JSGC. hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace. Ciao for now.